your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News, live at 5. Good evening, I'm John Riley. Did they or didn't they? There's been a lot of confusion coming out of Boston all afternoon as to whether investigators have arrested a suspect in connection with Monday's bomb attack. Now it appears they didn't. That's the latest word from federal officials. As you know, two blasts killed three people and injured dozens more near the finish line of the Boston Marathon on Monday. Several news outlets had reported that an arrest had been made today or that an arrest was imminent. The AP cited an unnamed law enforcement official as saying a suspect was in custody and was expected to appear at a Boston courthouse under heavy security. But the FBI and U.S. Attorney General's office, or U.S. Attorney's office, excuse me, in Boston dispute that. Now tonight, there's late word that investigators have an image of a potential suspect in the bombings, but they do not have a name. Apparently, investigators made the discovery while poring over photos and video of the blast. Hopefully, we'll have some definitive answers. A news conference was expected to get underway at any moment, but now we're told it's been postponed. It is not clear when or if it will happen, but we will bring you the very latest information as soon as we get it. Lehigh Valley residents will gather tomorrow night to pray for the people of Boston. The Easton Interfaith Action Committee has organized a candlelight vigil in the city center square. It will be held at 7 p.m. and it's expected to last about a half an hour. The public is invited to attend. As the bombing investigation continues in Boston, another FBI probe is underway in Washington. Officials say suspicious letters that were mailed to President Obama and Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker were laced with ricin, a deadly poison. The letters were intercepted at off-site mail facilities. According to the FBI, the letters both say to see a wrong and not expose it is to become a silent partner to its continuance. The letters were postmarked from Memphis, Tennessee, and both are signed, I am KC, and I approve this message. Officials say suspicious letters were also sent to lawmakers in Michigan and Arizona, but investigators say those didn't contain anything dangerous. A bipartisan proposal to expand background check for gun purchases has been defeated on the Senate floor. A vote was held this afternoon on the measure introduced by Senators Pat Toomey and Joe Manchin. It would have required background checks for all transactions at gun shows and online, but the bill fell short of the 60 votes it needed to move forward. If you have something to say about Allentown's plan to lease its water and sewer operations, now's the time to speak up. Things got heated when no public comment was allowed after the lease issue came up at the last city council meeting. But tonight, residents take their turn at the mic. WFMZ's Will Lewis has more from Allentown City Hall. The site will be easy to remember, AllentownWaterSewer.com. This is a new informational website from the Lehigh County Authority. The site talks about LCA's qualifications, the lease process, and the board of directors. Since submitting the winning bid of $220 million, LCA has been waiting to let Allentown residents know who could be running the water and sewer system for the next 50 years. Currently, the company serves 55,000 people in 16 townships around the city of Allentown. An LCA spokesperson says the Water Authority feels this is a good lease agreement for the city and the nonprofit group. LCA claims to be one of Allentown's largest customers and felt the only way to control what happens to the system was to bid on it. The company has admitted that rates will go up for city residents and that bonds to pay the $220 million up front will be borrowed and repaid based on the income from the Allentown system, not on the backs of suburban customers. So far, the company has not released information about financing or answered questions from the public. And that was Will Lewis reporting. A community is in shock following the deaths of a family of four in Bucks County. Investigators say the husband and father killed himself in a garage filled with carbon monoxide, and his wife and two daughters died while trying to save him. Now those who knew the victims are reeling. WFMZ's Catherine Hawley is at the Quakertown Community High School with more. With sadness hanging over the high school like a shadow, students did their best to brighten it Wednesday. And there's a lot of people wearing pink today for her. To honor Kim. To show that, like, how much she meant one person to this whole community so much. 
Tuesday night, students organized a push for everyone to wear pink to school Wednesday. Kim always like wore pink as a joke on Wednesdays because of the movie Mean Girls, and she kind of kept with it. The color has been a way for students to grieve and heal. It kind of showed that we're all together and we're all here for each other, I guess. I think to show like that everyone supports each other has really helped everyone. Monday night, investigators found Kim and Jamie, along with their parents, Gary and Michelle, dead inside their Coomery Road home. The Bucks County District Attorney tells 69 News Gary went to another home on the property after a fight with his wife. He broke the garage door handle and started his car. The family tried to save him. Authorities say Michelle was found in the garage with Jamie and Kim in the kitchen. Friends are trying to stay positive through the shock and pain. She it was just like very friendly and outgoing. Like you always like heard her laugh in the hallway. She's just the nicest girl I've ever met. Anytime anybody needed help, she would always come and help them. That was Catherine Hawley reporting. Pennsylvania narcotics agents say that they've busted a drug ring that distributed millions of dollars of meth throughout the Lehigh Valley. A total of 23 people were arrested, including more than a dozen from the Lehigh Valley. Police say these men, Gary Cooner and Michael Learman, were the ringleaders. The state's attorney general's office says that the drugs were taken from Mexico and delivered to a location in Las Vegas. Then they were shipped to the Lehigh Valley via FedEx. Officials say $7 million worth of meth was distributed over five years. Police say all, the ring also distributed marijuana in the Lehigh Valley. Drivers are bracing for some long-term road work in Bethlehem. The construction project centers on Route 412 in the city. Tomorrow night, crews will be removing a bridge in the area, which is expected to cause delays between Emory Street and Shimersville Road. Later this month, 412 will be shifted to single-lane traffic in each direction between Wagner and Daly Avenues. The traffic pattern will remain in effect through the winter. Up next, farewell to the Iron Lady. Britain is saying goodbye to its former Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. More on her funeral service straight ahead. Plus, it looks like a more walkable south side is in Bethlehem's future. We'll tell you how the city's making some key attractions more pedestrian friendly.